we've made it to episode five. That's 10, five. And I am excited for this one because in this video, we're gonna talk about my Gretsch. This one is really one of those milestones. I think I talked about it in my last video with the, the Angelico, that that was kind of a happy accident. But this one, this is one I, I sought after for a while and I explained that in a moment. This is truly, out of my guitars, one of the dream guitars. If the house is burning and I can only save one or two, this one's up for consideration in that. Um, but let me quickly talk about the guitar itself and just the specs, just cause there's not a lot. This is a Gretsch. I believe it is the player's edition, the Sparkle Jet. It is a beauty to behold. Hopefully this finish comes out great on camera. Tremendous aesthetic wise and playability wise, super nice. I mean, it's got all the classic Gretsch attunements with the Bigs B. I will say the pickups are not stock. That's the only part that's been changed. So like most of my guitars, I bought this one secondhand. Uh, this one actually came from Reverb. So I was able to get a really good price on it because they are pretty expensive, brand new. The previous owner changed out the stock Gretsch pickups for the TV Jones Powertrons. I think they got a little more output um, than your standard uh, Gretsch pickups. So that's the only thing that's been done to that. But other than that, it is as it came. Where do I start with this one? Well, um, in my guitar playing, at this point, I would dare to say I was probably reaching intermediate levels. You know, I felt pretty confident going into any Sunday that I could play most of the parts. One of the milestones that happened that year is my church was growing and we had actually started expanding outside our walls. And so what I mean by that is we actually started doing more community events, um, linking up with other churches and having services. And as part of the worship team, I was starting to play outside of just my regular Sunday church. So that was pretty nerve wracking and exciting all at the same time, because here I'd been on this journey of guitar playing, working on my skills, recording, all that stuff, uh, collecting guitars, working with effects. And now I had been grown accustomed to just my Sunday routine. Kind of took me out of my comfort zone because again, we started playing in different places, different audiences. That really took my playing to another level. I had been playing live for quite a while, but I think if you've ever played in front of different audiences, you kind of understand it's a little different feeling when you're in some place that you're not as used to Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. So right around that time i still hadn't got this yet but right around that time was when that transition in my church culture was happening so it was a super exciting time and we actually played i'll never forget it we my church opened up for one of my favorite groups their name is barack they're in the spanish-speaking world so if you don't know them look them up they're an amazing group they were coming for the first time to iowa and they were looking for a local church so my church got the honors of opening up for them. And so that was super exciting um, to do. And like I said, just an experience I'll never forget because it was the first time I'd done something like that. We did that and that went great. That, that still didn't lead to this, I'll get to that. I tell that story just to kind of paint the picture that we had started doing just more and more events like that, different uh, concerts, worship nights, other services with other churches and so forth. Later that year, another big group in the Spanish speaking world came by the name of Mier San Marcos. And we didn't open up for them, but we went to the concert, of course, to just partake and fellowship and be a part of the community. And of course, the, the concert that they were hosting. When I saw the guitar player, I had known his name. His name is Chris Rocha, amazing guitar player, dub awards, everything the man can do. He's great. And I saw him play this guitar that night. And he's a big Gretsch player. And at this time, I hadn't had any Gretsches. In fact, this is my only Gretsch of this day. I saw him play this guitar and I was just like awestruck. And I, I looked at it and I was like, I'm going to get that guitar one day. The concert went great. All that's fine. Uh, but when I left that event, you know, in the days and weeks to come, I, I kept thinking about this guitar. And so I started looking it up. What is it about? What's a Gretsch? You know, again, I, I hadn't had uh, this guitar at that point, so I, I didn't know. And so, of course, I found out how ex ridiculously expensive these things are. Um, so I was like, man, I, I don't know if I could. Uh, I, I'm sh I had the money, but it was, I was like, I, can't, I don't know if I could spend that much. Up until that point, I hadn't spent as much as this guitar would be. 
So it was really uh, got me thinking of just, should I get it? Should I not? Should I go a different route and so forth? But I, again, I just kept thinking of that night at the concert. I was like, I really want that guitar. I gave myself a goal and I said, I would keep working on my guitar skills and I would keep getting better. And if I could do that, then I would, I felt that I earned to buy such an expensive guitar. And so it wasn't like I said, you know, I got to learn 10 scales this year or something like that. I didn't have like a specific goal. I just said, I, I want to be better. I want to be in a spot that I feel like I could spend that much on a guitar and it'd be a worthy investment because I could probably buy two other guitars that weren't as much um, and get just as well of, of fulfillment out of them. Long story short, about a year, I want to say like 10 months, almost a year went by where I kept working at it and I got to a point where I was like, okay, I can do this, it's gonna be worth it, and so forth. And so that's what I did. So I went on Reverb and I started looking for this guitar, because I think brand new, maybe around 2400, 2600, somewhere in that range, I was trying not to pay that much, even though I felt like I had earned it at this point, that I had saved up, it'd been 10 months or so, I was like, I was ready to get a new guitar. I found one on Reverb for about 1800 and so and this and that's this one. I already went over the specs and so forth. It was at a huge discount compared to brand new and he had been the only owner. So I was like, "Yes, this is the one. This is for me." Found it, bought it. A couple weeks later, it showed up at my home. I was in love with this thing. It just played great. I love the aesthetic of it and it just kept me playing guitar and so it was really great. Funny side story. I, I don't remember exactly how long after I got it, but it was still new to me, you know, maybe within a couple months. I feel like my accidents always happen within a couple months. I don't know what it is. A little later. I was at rehearsal one day, just regular rehearsal. I had my guitar, this guitar. I had my Helix on the floor. Let me just say at this point, I had not known or looked into what a locking strap was. You probably guessed it. Some point in the middle of the set of rehearsal, the strap on my guitar just came off and it just fell right down onto my Helix. So not only did I dent and scratch the guitar, I'll show you that in a second, but I dented the Helix so bad that it didn't work and I had to send it in to line six to get fixed. That was a funny week because then I had to borrow one of my friends, other, he had a Helix as well. So shout out to him, appreciate you for doing that. It was just a bad accident um, for it to happen, but let me see if I could show you. I don't know if you can see that right there, kind of around the jack, dented it in. It is what it is. So did I need to buy such an expensive guitar? No, probably not. It was definitely a splurge type of thing and just something, again, I waited a long time to purchase another guitar just because I wanted to keep working on it. I firmly believe that you, the guitar player, is more important than the equipment that you're using. A good guitar player will play good, will play like they do, on just about any guitar if it's set up properly. So I'll finish off by saying that this really became my journeyman's guitar. As we started to grow as a church, as we started to play outside, be exposed to different churches, cultures, events, and just all that, um, not only did I grow in my community, but I started to grow as a guitar player itself. And so this guitar really came along with me in all of that. And it's crazy to think about because I almost didn't buy it because just of how expensive it was. But when I look back on those moments and I have some pictures of some of those events, I'm just like, I couldn't have imagined doing that without this one. It's just one of those things.